a verse from that first reading and a first verse from the second reading. First of all, God's word to Jonah. Go to Nineveh and proclaim my message. And then secondly, Jesus' invitation to the first disciples, come and follow me. First of all, Paul, thank you for your welcome. It's always a delight to come to St. Paul's, and particularly tonight, to preside at this service of confirmation. And to you, Peter, and Catherine, and Rick, on behalf of the whole church, thank you. Thank you for your willingness to stand in amongst God's people and in God's presence and claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ. It is the greatest privilege that can be given to a human being, and I'm deeply grateful for your willingness now to proclaim that yourselves. Be assured of our prayers for you in the journey of faith which lies before you. Of course, it began long before tonight with encouragement and prayer from others as you too have sought to understand what God may be saying to you. But tonight, pray God, isn't going to be the last step on that journey, nor is it just a ticking of a box, a requirement of the church. That would be a terrible thing if all we did was tick boxes in the process. No, this is God's work among, in you and through you. And I, on behalf of the whole church, am deeply grateful. We might imagine that the two readings that Peter has just read were chosen specifically for this service of confirmation, for they contain, as the two verses I've already started with, the theme of calling and sending. But they weren't chosen for this service. They are the readings set for this Sunday, for the whole church to read, to feed on, and hopefully to live out in their daily lives. For calling and sending are an integral part of all that God is about with his people in every generation and in every place. God has always called his people to come and follow him, to listen to him. And as he calls, so he at the same time sends those who respond to go in witness and in service. They are two integral parts connected together. You can't be one without the other. You can't be one who hears and then says, I'm not going. And you can't be somebody who goes and says, I wonder why I've come. No, you hear the voice of Jesus. You've heard it in different unique ways for each of you. And you have responded. Here am I, you have said. And in a few moments' time, we shall hear you say that publicly, that you are turning to Jesus Christ. So, you've heard that voice. And tonight, through the laying on of my hands and our prayer for you, God will confirm that call and your hearing in and through you. It is a profound action of God in confirming us for what is confirmation, but the making strong of human commitment, the making strong by God's Holy Spirit on you as you've heard it. But having heard and having come to this point and having been confirmed, he immediately sends you. Hopefully not to Nineveh. You never know. But he will send you to witness and to service in your communities. And you will each live out that going, that witnessing and serving in your own particular unique way but you will do it empowered by and in the name of Jesus Christ. You become a witness to that work of God in and through you. By word and action, we pray, you will bear that witness, not only in word, but in action as well. Bear witness to that love of God in Jesus Christ who transforms lives, and you know that he transforms lives because he is transforming yours and he will continue to do that for the rest of your life. I pray, I hope, I intend that you will grow in your discipleship. If you cease to grow for whatever reason, you cease to be of help to the God who sends you. 
He wants us, needs us, encourages us to be living witnesses, not just talking about past, but in the future. And you will witness and serve in Christ's name. Serve the needs of his people, wherever they may be, in your unique way, that they will recognize in and through you the work of God. In human terms, all of this is utterly, utterly impossible. For we cannot do it in our own strength. We might hear the voice to go and then want to choose where we go. I'll go here, but most certainly not over there. Well, you will have no choice in where God will send you because he will send you where he needs you to be. So, sister and brothers in Christ, let me encourage you to continue to grow in your discipleship. That is absolutely critical if you are to be a witness and a servant of God's people. Grow day by day in your engagement, your struggle with Scripture itself. Grow day by day in being part of the community of God's people. We who gather around you tonight to encourage you on that journey. Whatever else you may be about, don't ever become so busy, too busy, that you neglect your own journey under God in Jesus Christ. In my experience, it takes time and it demands rhythm, day by day, week by week. Don't set yourself impossible burdens but equally, don't neglect that journey. And if you are to be a witness and a servant of God's people, remember that they are God's people you are going to witness to and serve. Not yours, not the church's, thank God, but God's people. Treat them as those whom God has made. Service and witness to Jesus Christ, in my experience, above all else, requires gentleness. Before we can witness, before we can serve, we must first of all listen. Listen to their needs. Listen to what's going on in their lives. And then by his grace, you may and will indeed be able to bring that word of hope, that touch of life, which is God's gift to his people. And in years to come, whoever might stand in here at St. Paul's holding the pastoral staff of the bishop, that bishop, I hope and pray, will find in front of him or her fine would-be disciples just like you. And some of them would be here because of you, because of your care of them, your encouragement of them, your service of them, in you that they will have seen this life-changing work of God in Jesus Christ. You may never know who they are, and in many ways, pray God, you never will know who they are, because you might be tempted, perhaps you won't, but it's a real temptation to say they're here because of me. No, no. They will be here because they would have heard that voice of God saying, come, follow me. And then, as they've come and followed, they too will go and bear witness. So grow in your discipleship. And if it doesn't sound too strange to you, enjoy it. The one thing it isn't is a punishment it's a gift. Enjoy it and help other people to find the life-giving faith of Jesus Christ, in whose name and by whose power you are to be confirmed in his faith tonight. And may God bless each of you richly in that journey, in your service, and in your witness of Jesus Christ himself. And hold those two verses in your heart and in your prayers tonight as you come now to make your profession 
of faith. Come, says Jesus, come and follow me. Go, says God, and bear witness to my love and to my power to transform human lives and make them also witnesses and followers of Jesus Christ. Amen.